the scientist Madhav Gadgil joins us at this stage. Several years back, Mr. Gadgil had written a report where he said that unless there were large-scale, deliberate efforts to try and protect the Western Ghats, then a situation like this would very well have uh, arisen, and indeed it has. Uh, Mr. Gadgil, thanks very much for speaking to us. Um, do you believe that the lack of attention to the ecological sensitivity uh, of the Western Ghats is the reason why we face this problem in Kerala today? Yes, certainly. The uh, major reason uh, behind this is, of course, that the drive for so-called development has ignored the fact that development doesn't mean merely construction and more and more roads and more and more dams, but actually means a betterment of lives for the people. And uh, uh, that certainly means that ecological uh, health of the uh, surroundings, because people at the grassroots are very much dependent for their livelihoods, for their health, for their well-being on healthy environments. And this has been totally neglected, and certain kind of development in the interest of a small segment of people has been thrust on them. For example, the stone quarries. Yes. People are extremely unhappy all over Kerala with a massive proliferation of illegal stone quarries without taking permission of the Gram Sabha against their wishes everywhere. Now, this is not the kind of development one wants. Okay. And Mr. Thomas Isaac, I saw, was there. He was the driving force behind People's Plan campaign in Kerala some 20 years ago. So what our report had advocated is that uh, we gave certain broad guidelines for ecological uh, proper management in various zones, not right. just restricted to the most sensitive zone, but throughout the state. Okay, sir, and just one moment. I just wanted to, I, I wanted to bring in Praveen people. Parmeshwar, the director of the Lifeology Research Foundation as well. Uh, Praveen, you know, um, Mr. Gargil had come out with his report. There was a second report, the Kasturi Rangan report, which had come down as well. Now, Mr. Gargil in his report had a number of very serious steps, uh, which he said just had to be looked into. But then the following report, which was there, uh, really diluted many of those recommendations. So do you believe that that really is the big problem that uh, has had an impact on Kerala today? Uh, see, Vishnu, I have two uh, yeah. pertinent problems over here. You know, see the points over here. The last major flood Kerala faced was in 1924. And during 1924, if you take the case of the amount of rain, it is not very high than what Kerala has received today. So that, but during 1924, uh, there were no much quarries over here. There were no much high-rise buildings over here. There were no much tarred road over here. So that a direct comparison between what is happening in terms of quarries and what is happening in terms of uh, the high-rise buildings, the flats and constructions, uh, I don't think that there is a very direct correlation with the current flood. The reasons may be there, the problems may be there. Some of these may be a smaller reason for this, but I don't think that a direct coordination and the straight coordination is there because the same happened or even grave on happened 94 years back. That was in 1924 as well. So the direct correlation is it to be established. Okay. Easy to say. Uh, and uh, prima facie, when a person is saying that, uh, you know, people may feel that, yes, that is right, but there is no scientific correlation yet to be established. That is number one. And number two, uh, Gargill Commission report, I have studied the report in detail because I have... Okay, sorry, we've lost that line with him. Would you like to... Uh, where do you see this entire issue? Because the point that he's actually mentioning is that you can't make a correlation between earlier and now. Earlier on, yes, there were floods, uh, but now there is stone quarrying, but there may have been stone quarrying then as well. We don't really know. How, how can you really make a co correlation? Exactly. And what he says that the previous flood was only in 1924 is also not correct. 1961 also right. there was a flood. And there have been in between uh, smaller floods also. So I think this and this correlation can be established as you are right. And unless you have a very clearly defined study as to what happened in 24 and what happened this time, till then you can't uh, say either way. But there is very clear ecological science behind that if you encroached on the waterways, if you do unsustainable mining and quarrying, and you know, look at the geography of Kerala. On one side is the mountain, the other side is the sea. And these are the two natural elements which are wor worst affected in climate change scenario. 
Right. The biggest impacts are on mountains and in the sea. And Kerala is having both of them and a very high rainfall. In such a situation, if you denude the forest, if you uh, encroach on the flood plain, if you do unsustainable mining and you are inviting trouble, and the dams particularly, the way they operated the dams, dams are not supposed to be filled up before the end of the film monsoon period. But they, by end of the July, the the uh, Idukki was full and most of the dams were full. Now, that was completely unwise thing to do. And they had an opportunity between 31st of to July water in a, and in a 8th of August. Exactly. If they had released that time, then they would not have to release water when the floods were coming. Mulla Periyar also did the same thing. It was more than 90 percent full before the 8th of August. And when the rains come, it also started releasing a lot of water. And there should be an inquiry about this thing. And there is a role of Central Water Commission, both sure. in terms of Mulya Periyar and in the flood forecasting. In the Central Water Commission is the only agency doing flood forecasting in India. Yeah. If you forecast, you get prepared. But the Central Water Commission has no flood forecasting in whole of Kerala. Okay. I just want last word to you, uh, Praveen Prameshwar. Mining activities, large-scale constructions, thermal power plants, highly polluting industries, the Gargil report had wanted a lot of these to be stopped. The fact of the matter that is that it's not been stopped. Do you believe there is, again, a correlation between the existence of all of this and what we face in Kerala today? And the, the report is that Goa could be next. See, uh, Vishnu, two points over there. You know, a very scientific correlation regarding the Gargil Commentary report, which is submitted in 2011, and what happened over here, I mean, a couple of weeks back, is it to be established. But in the general case scenario, it can be. But in the exclusively for the Kerala case scenario, I think we need more details. That is number one. And number two, one more thing is very important. Uh, the Gargil Committee report or further, the, further to that, the Kasuri Rangan report. So we need to take the reports back and we need to discuss more on the report. Because what happened in Kerala, if you can closely watch, the more discussions were not happened in the public domain. So only very less discussions happen. So more discussion has to be has happened. You know, there are more, lot of uh, you know there are a lot of points in the Guardian Commission report which is impractical to implement. Let me put it the strong word: impractical to implement in a very you know such a society. So uh, because Kerala is a country which is having you know eight nineteen is the uh, population density of Kerala, whereas the national average is hardly three twenty four, and more than thirty percent of the land is ecologically fragile in the state, you know, and the population is growing in the exponential level as well. So that it is very tough to, you know, it is very tough. Many of the suggestions in the Gargil Committee report is near, near to impossible. Implement. But difficult to implement. But I would say, Vishnu, we need more discussion on that. We need to take the reports back, go through the reports and take the more okay. practical points and then try to implement. May not be the report What full, exactly are those practical part points? Of the I think a lot of questions we need to be asked uh, on that. But one way or the other, these floods have happened. Uh, fortunately, rescues have gone down, but it's relief and rehabilitation, which is so important now. What's the road ahead? We're completely out of time. I'd like to thank all of you for joining us. I'm sorry, we're completely out of time on this program. But Kerala is, uh, is, is a topic that we're going to keep coming back to. So much more needs to be done as we finally move to the next phase. Thanks very much for being with us. Goodbye.